In the November 2020 election, 70 percent of South Dakota voters approved the legalization of medical marijuana in the state. That law took effect in July, the same day Native Nations Dispensary opened on the Flandreau Santee Sioux Reservation. But in tonight's Eye on Cattle Land, potential, potential patients across South Dakota say the state's medical marijuana program is taking much longer to effectively roll out. We have uh, about 10,000 plus patients in our system right now. The number of interested patients Native Nations cannabis is seen on the Flandreau Santee Sioux tribe is a stark contrast to the number of South Dakota medical cannabis cards issued so far. We have only 300 uh, state licensed patients right now. BJ Olson, a medical cannabis patient and dispensary owner in Hartford, is certain there are far more South Dakotans interested in utilizing medical marijuana. I'm probably having five to ten people per day reach out to me with additional questions and I don't want to be the resource for everybody, but somebody has to be. He believes the low number of state issued cards is due to a lack of public information and available help from the state for patients trying to figure out this new system. When you look at the state website and it shows the patients the process, the very first process is see your physician. Well, as we know, with 2,000 physicians in the state, there's only 90 of them that are certified to uh, help a patient with cannabis, but nobody knows who those 90 are. <laughs> nobody gets a card without a recommendation. Native Nations Cannabis also requires patients to be evaluated by a doctor in order to receive a medical card. But the tribe's ordinance is designed to make that process more accessible and affordable for patients. We do authorize telemedicine, so if somebody were to utilize a service um, in the state of South Dakota, because there is telemedicine here, and outside of the state, so long as the individual has the right to prescribe medicine in the jurisdiction in which they're licensed. The doctor that I ended up seeing was actually from Illinois, who was also registered to practice uh, health in South Dakota. Olson says the state system turns that telemedicine visit into an expensive endeavor for patients. Nobody's insurance, nobody's health care current provider is going to help them get that recommendation. So they seek options like I did through MyMedicalMarijuana.com. It was a $200 fee for me to visit with a, uh, a, a physician, and then it was another $75 fee for me to pay to the state. It's a stark contrast to what he was paying for his former medication through insurance. My insurance allows me to get oxycodone for $2. Several years ago, Olson's physician wrote him an open prescription for opioids to help him manage pain while trying to hold off on back surgery for as long as possible. The, the opioids work. They, they take away the pain, but they really they take away all emotion. They take away all feeling in general, and I just couldn't live that way. It's why he said he was willing to pay whatever premium the state required to ensure he had legal, legitimate access to another form of pain management medication. It's not the typical stoner. I'm a successful business person. I, I know many successful people who utilize cannabis but not for the way that people would typically think. They utilize it to help them relax, to help them sleep, reduce the amount of pain, and not put, make me a zombie like the opioids had. While the medical marijuana works for him, Olson says the state's cards are lacking. This is my South Dakota uh, medical marijuana card that I got for $275. It is a piece of paper. There's nothing to this card at all. As you can tell, my picture is already starting to fade away. Olson was shocked to see the quality of the state's card, both as a patient and a business owner, who will soon have to check these cards in order to sell his products. Uh, on something so highly controlled and so highly regulated and so highly scrutinized, this is something that they would give us to be able to verify if people were actually able to utilize the product or not. If you're trying to sell somebody a product and you can't read that number on the bottom, what do you do? We're going to have to turn them away, unfortunately. They're going to have to contact the state and get a card that I can accept at my dispensary because under no circumstance can I allow my dispensary to be at any sort of risk in accepting a card that isn't legible and that I can't verify that the person sitting in front of me is the person on this card. This is it. Uh, it's a solid plastic card. Um, that can has some wear with it. You can scan it. It's another stark contrast to Native Nations medical cannabis program, where their solid cards play a major role in the security of their dispensary. We utilize BioTrack. Uh, it has a, a function where if we import that, they can kick out a card that has a, a unique number and a unique barcode, so that when a patient purchases products, they will know exactly where they're at and make sure that they're an actual valid patient. But patients who pass the tribe's requirements 
are finding the biggest difference between the two cards is the protections they provide. That have this, but they don't have this. And it's really dangerous if they have the cannabis in their possession and they don't have this. While the travel card protects you here on the reservation, some Native Nations patients are finding legal issues once they leave the reservation. We're between 10 and 15 arrests that we know about right now. It's a little disheartening that somebody's coming in to get some medicine for themselves and are stopped for, uh, you know, a tail light out and having all of their products taken. Flandreau Santee Sioux Attorney General Seth Pierman says right now the tribe's executive committee has made it a priority to pay for the criminal defense of their South Dakota medical cannabis patients who are charged for having their product. The voters of South Dakota said medical marijuana is not a criminal offense anymore, but some state's attorneys are still criminalizing it. Pierman says the doctor's recommendation tied to the tribe's card provides patients some protection under South Dakota law, but the arrests are still happening. It's really disheartening, but we have well over 75,000 transactions. Um, so 10 or 15 people out of 75,000 transactions is uh, still very minimal in the overall stance of what's going on. That risk is why Olson says even though the state's card may be flawed, the protection it provides makes it essential for all cannabis patients. Absolutely. So, so this card right here gives me protection in the state currently. So regardless of how I acquired my cannabis, as long as I have this and I'm in possession of this, then I can't be prosecuted. My word of advice to the public, the public service announcement is if you, know, if you are going to be a medical cannabis patient, go out and get your card. We reached out to the state health department with questions about the paper ID cards, but did not receive a response. Now, if you would like more information about medical cannabis or how to get a state card, the Cannabis Industry Association is hosting a free informative meeting for the public and potential patients on April 20th. We have the details with this story on our website.